so today is my first day of holiday. So glad all my projects are done and I have absolutely nothing to do for the rest of the year, which is great. So I thought, hey, I haven't used this big guy over here for a very long time. Actually, since I built it, which is my very first YouTube video back in, I think, August. So be sure to check it out. I'll link the, the video at the end of this, this current vlog if you want to check it out and create your own huge softbox. So I thought, you know what, how about today, I'm going to focus on just creating Instagram content. So I've got this little old bouquet of flowers behind me. I thought, hey, let's work a bit on my softbox over here because just, I haven't done it in ages. Quickly set everything up. I thought I'd just show you guys a little process of mine from the very start of setting up the whole shoot, going through it and then going into post-processing at the very end. The first successful step to creating any kind of cool content on Instagram is make sure your lens choice is right for the kind of content you want to shoot. Right now I'm using my 16-35 f2.8 on this camera, my 5D Mark II. I need to switch that guy out for my, I think, I think a, a 100mm macro f2.8 should do. What do you think? I'm gonna switch it around. Yeah, I don't think wide is quite the, the style for this. So I've got the backdrop up there and I'm gonna just use my macro, get a nice tight shot of all this. Move the camera back a little bit because it is 100 mil. Let's have some fun. Okay, so one more thing. I have to apologize for the noise you guys are hearing. That's actually the fans of two Anchrom D lights. Okay, so switch back to my 1635 and what you see behind me is the actual final setup that I've used for this image. I've used my softbox over here as the main key light and over there, bouncing light off the white wall in the corner there is my other D light, also set to very low power, same as the key light. It's just to get an even nice little strip line on the glass bottle. Let me quickly show you guys. Here we go, here's the big softbox, powered from behind Google Anacom Flash. Set to maximum power because I am trying to film here. We've got the subject right here, that is our little flower right there. There's the other one, just bouncing light off this wall, giving us a nice little strip light on each side of the bottle. So there you see, now it's nicely lit from either side. Hopefully we get a bit of this detail. Cool, there you have it folks. So uh, let's head into the post-production and check out what's happening on that side. Let's check what magic we can go create. Just heading up the stairs. Cool, let's check it out. Okay, so we've got Capture One open up right now and I've got all my images loaded up. Other images that I did kind of just try a different light setup with, but this is my favorite. I just didn't really dig anything else as much. It's like a little bit of a rim light there, but it's not as great as I'd like it to be. I'd like it a bit more subtle. That's why I chose this one. You can still see a little bit of rim light there. Little tiny bit of soft light. And that's exactly what I was going for. Everything looks a bit more painterly now. And uh, if we zoom in, you can see that tones and everything really look good i've just added a little bit of clarity here i love the single light setup using that massive softbox just gave us really nice tones subtle subtle tones and the contrast is really nice and the soft lighting helps a lot and uh, there we go so i mean this this image is pretty much done all i've done with it is just straighten it out and just play a little bit with the levels here and there so there's not actually much we have to do with this let's just get everything set up for photoshop i just want to tweak the colors a little bit more so let's go and make our way over here to the color balance just gonna start with my shadows a little bit. Just wanna see what I can do. What'll actually add that nice mood to everything. I always like blue being a nice shadowy color. It's something a bit more natural about blue being your color. Add that in. Just a tad. Very, very slight adjustments. And subtlety has always been the key with this kind of stuff. There we go, I think that looks good. Now over to our mid-tones. Push those colors slightly. Don't wanna make it too yellow. Check our brightness, that looks good. Over to our highlights, you can see it working its way on the leaves here. 
Let's also try just the same kind of color as our midtones. Quite happy with the way it looks over here on my screen right now. So I'm going to export it. Let's take it into Photoshop and mess around and see what cool effects we can do with the color grading. Right, now that we've got it open in Photoshop, I'm gonna do my usual color grading that I do for most of my images uh, that go onto Instagram. Basically just using adjustment layers such as LUTs, color balance, curves, and a few little extra tricks. So first of all, I'll go straight into the curves. Just leave that there for now and uh, just get all my layers set up. Uh, black and white that we're gonna probably put to soft light. Don't worry about it too much, I know it looks bad. We'll get there in a sec. And after that, we are going to go with color selection and color look up and Duplicate that, duplicate that, duplicate that. Okay, cool. I think that's pretty much a good base we can start working off of. So first of all, I'm just gonna tweak my black and white layer a bit. Bring down the opacity just a bit. Subtlety is definitely the key to color grading or editing the images. This is no exception. All right, so it just adds a little bit of contrast. There we go, that looks good. And then take our curves and do just a little S curve. I like to do a little bit of color grading in here as well. That's our red channel, now for our green. Onto our blue channel. Maybe we want to add a bit more yellow or green in there. All right, there we go. Now, it hasn't changed much as you can see. Very subtle changes. Let's bring out those reds. You can really see the flowers pop when I just adjust those reds. I prefer to keep the values of, especially the selective color, between minus 10 and plus 10. It doesn't really break the colors too much or break the pixels up too much. It just kind of evens it out. Right, and that's done for our selective color. Now onto our color lookup table or LUTs. Love this feature in Photoshop. I love that you can actually do something with it. So let me quickly just run through everything. I'm not gonna explain what each of them do. So first of all, I'm probably gonna start with a horror blue. Now this is horrific at the moment, but if we tone it down, it looks good. Adds a weird low contrasty blue look, and then a three strip that just makes everything pop. It looks good. Bring that down just a bit. Then I'm going to bring in full colors and bring that down just a bit as well. And lastly, just a soft warming touch. I sometimes prefer to go back to my curves layer just to check up if there's not maybe something I can change because layering all the colors on top of each other tends to change the contrast and everything. So you want to maybe sometimes go back to your curves layer and just adjust a little bit by little bit, just find little adjustments. I just want to add in a vibrance layer here. What I tend to do is sometimes just pull back the saturation a little bit and increase the vibrance. This just makes the tones blend in a little bit nicer and just makes it feel a bit more natural. Also gives off that nice painterly feel to it as well. It's not too rich, it's not too muted. It's kind of somewhere in between in the middle. Next up, what I usually like to do with these images is also then take the texture a little bit further, add something that they call the Orton effect, which is basically this. Duplicate your layer, add a bit of blur to it, some Gaussian blur, yeah, something about nine, 10 pixels. And I usually go with the light and blending mode. Already you can see it, it is, kind of blurring but details are actually shining through so i'm just going to bring that down nothing more than say 20 25 percent if i switch the layer on and off you can see all it really does is it just further blends in the the colors and the tones and the contrast i'm just going to leave it at 18 percent opacity so that's our original image what i'm going to do now is i'm going to head over to my channels tab I'm gonna control click on the RGB layer. Uh, it's not much of a selection, so I'm gonna hold in shift and control and click again and click again and click one more time. All it does now is it just creates a selection of the RGB channel. We're gonna create a luminosity mask using this. So all I'm gonna do is create a curves layer. And it's already selected by mask over there. There it is. And go into my curves layer and simply just push this up. You can see there's a slight adjustment happening there. I'm then gonna duplicate my curves layer, invert the mask, drop it down below there, and then bring it down. And all it does is, if I just zoom in here, it just kind of mutes it a bit, actually. I mean, you can always just 
twist it around like that and get more contrast by just simply switching around the layers that are inverted and that are not inverted. I prefer to use it this way. And then I'm just gonna switch my color grading layer back on. I actually should have done that just now. So I need to back, go back because it's way too bright. That's the tone that I wanted to get. And this needs to be darkened down. And that's just kind of how you learn to do these things. You just do it all by process of elimination. There we go, it just adds a bit of contrast in there. I mean, you can go to your red channel now and increase the reds or decrease the reds and you can really mess around with uh, everything in here. That looks really nice already. And uh, I can go down to here to my shadows. I can increase that red a little bit. Just a tad. Sometimes I'm kind of stuck in, in between decisions. Like both look great, but I know I have to go with one option here. But I think I'm gonna keep it as natural as I can. Just keep it to the greens, keep the natural colors there. Maybe this image just needs a tad of sharpening. So all I'm gonna do is create a stamp of this layer, going up to my filters palette, and then going to high pass. Now we can use a little high pass filter here, and just maybe to 0.9 yeah set the blending mode to something like soft light soft light usually works well otherwise you can go hard light it just makes it a bit harsher on the highlights especially quite like that like that look i am going to bring it down 100 percent sharpness is not great it looks so cheesy cool and there you have it folks i hope this has been uh, informative uh, and as fun as it has been for myself if you have anything to add tell me what you think what you prefer to use what you don't prefer to use drop me a comment down below and let's have a chat about it i'd love to hear your opinions about this if you enjoyed watching this video hit that like button and if you haven't done so already please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one